Welcome to Walker of Worlds podcast. My name is Rachel and this is the podcast where we step behind the veil to take a look at some long lost and little known urban legends and spooky stories. Lake Lanier is a reservoir in the northern portion of the US state of Georgia. It was created by the completion of the Burford Dam on the Chattahoochee River in 1956 and is also fed by the waters of the Chattahoochee River. The lake encompasses 38,000 acres and is named for the poet Sidley, Sidney Lanier. It was built and is operated by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers for flood control and water supplies. Its construction destroyed more than 50,000 acres of farmland and displaced more than 250 families, 15 businesses and relocated 20 cemeteries along with the remains in the process. If you're assuming that a town was destroyed in order to create the reservoir, then you'd have assumed right. Oscarville is the town that lies beneath the surface of Lake Lanier. The town was once the happy and prosperous home to a majority black population. All of that changed in 1912 when the neighbouring all-white town in Forsyth County, separated by the Chattahoochee River, ran them out, forcing the people of Oscarville to sell their land for cheap or face death. The attacks on black residents escalated following the death of May Crow, an 18-year-old white woman resident of Forsyth County. She was found raped and murdered on the banks of the Chattahoochee River. With little evidence, the police arrested four African Americans, Ernest Knox, Oscar Daniel, Jane Daniel and Robert Edwards. After Knox allegedly confessed after being tortured, Edwards was lynched by an angry mob before he could make it to trial. Knox and Daniel were both found guilty and hung. Over 5,000 whites gathered to watch the hanging of Knox and Daniel who tragically were believed to be innocent. Decades later, the remains of Oscarville was intentionally flooded to create a Lake Lanier. But the story doesn't end there and nor should it, because the horrors of those times should be remembered and taught to future generations. However, we're not here to talk about the history, that's the responsibility of someone far more qualified than myself. We're here to talk about what was left behind once Oscarville disappeared beneath the waters and became Lake Lanier. Over the course of 2023, seven people have drowned while swimming in the lake. Since records began, there have been over 700 deaths, many of them strange, suspicious or unexplained. 200 of those deaths have been since 1994, and as we enter the summer of 2024, we can probably expect a few more numbers to join those. Many of the structures, buildings and roads that were flooded during the lake's creation were left as is. Divers regularly find eerie relics of streets, walls and houses intact like an abandoned ghost town on the lake's bed. Discovery Channel's show Expedition X proved that there are 20 cemeteries with headstones and graves still at the bottom of the lake that were never removed, despite assurance that they were relocated and reinterred. The ancestors of the disrupted populations were never relocated, this sporking many stories of haunted encounters. In April of 1958... Delia May Parker Young was reportedly travelling with Susie Roberts to the Three Gables, a local roadhouse in Dawsonville, Georgia. Susie was driving her 1954 Ford across the Lanier Bridge when for some unknown reason she lost control of the car, crashing off the right-hand side of the bridge. Divers entered the lake and searched the area, but neither the vehicle nor any remains were discovered. The only physical evidence of the accident was a set of skid marks suggesting that the women's car went into the lake. Then a year later, in 1959, a fisherman discovered human remains had floated to the surface of the lake. Further examination yielded no obvious cause of death and the individual could not be positively identified, although the body was noted for missing both hands and several toes. Many assume that these were the remains of either Delia or Susie, but at the time it was impossible to know for sure. 31 years passed before Susie Roberts' 1954 Ford was finally found, when in November of 1990 the late bed was dredged in preparation to set the foundation for pillars of a new bridge. Unexpectedly, the shell of a rusted out car was discovered with human remains still behind the wheel. Through the personal belongings found in the car, a purse, rings and a watch, Susie Roberts was able to be identified and in light of this discovery, it was concluded that the young woman found decades before was in fact Delia May Parker Young. For three decades, Susie Roberts was trapped in her car hidden under 90 feet of water, but now she could be properly laid to rest. The incident has left the lake with one of its most famous stories. A female is reported to be seen walking up and down the length of Lanier Bridge. She wears a blue dress and is also said to be missing her hands. Another of the numerous apparitions reportedly to haunt Lake Lanier is that of a mysterious raft seen floating on the lake late at night. Its inhabitant is a shadowy figure pushing along with a pole and a lantern lighting his way. Those who have made claims to have seen this nautical apparition say it seems to appear and disappear from out of nowhere. 
One such sighting was reported by two fishermen who claimed to have seen it at about 1am on a cold autumn night. The raft was spotted in a section of the lake that is known to be roughly 45 feet deep, yet the raft's riders seemed to have no difficulty navigating the water with a pole to push him along. The two fishermen watched as the figure travelled along before suddenly shouting and jumping from the raft into the freezing water. Afraid something was coming for them, the fishermen quickly pulled up their lines and prepared to leave the area. But when they shined their lights across the water, there was no sign of the raft or the figure. The dark surface of the lake was calm and undisturbed as if nothing large had ever disrupted it. Those who believe this tale to be true believe the mysterious figure was in fact an echo of the past. When men once travelled the shallow rivers and creeks along the foothills of northern Georgia that have since been consumed by Lake Lanier. As well as the ghosts, visitors to the lake have reported strange noises and eerie feelings. Divers can go and explore the submerged town of Oscarville, and while some structures were removed prior to the lake's creation, divers have returned to say that the town is mostly intact, with streets still paved and houses still standing. In 2017, long-time diver Buck Buchanan told local media that he sometimes felt body parts in the lake during his many excursions. You reach out into the dark and you feel an arm or a leg and it doesn't move, he said. But it isn't just the lake that is haunted. Georgia has a rich history with many supernatural sightings and the town that sits on the lake's shores have its own tales to tell. In Gainesville, ghostly legends and mysterious sightings can be found especially at the Hall County Library's main branch, where the most famous ghost is the Lady of the Library. Ghost expert and assistant director of the system, Adrian Jurnis, says, I do know a couple of staff members who have run-ins with her, from literally seeing the back of her to actually seeing her face in the window. And what we think is that she is somehow attached to the land of the library, as this is where her house once stood. The lady of the library appears to be stuck in the 1800s, according to Jurnis. She kind of just ignores us, but when she does appear, it's mainly females that see her. The only male who is recorded to have seen her was someone whose mother who actually worked in the public library. But people only see her upstairs, mainly in the windows facing the front, said Jonas. She's described as wearing fashions from the 1800s. The one person who saw her in the window described her face as a perfect portrait face. The Eagle Theatre in downtown Sugar Hill, which opened in late 2018, is a brand new building. Its beautiful Art Deco style harkens back to a bygone era reminiscent of the Sugar Hill was founded in 1939. Many of the Eagle Theatre's elegant features make it appear older in age. The properties around the theatre do have a long history. Old City Hall was built in the 1970s and the current City Hall, which is next door to the Eagle Theatre, was built on property that was once the location of a leather and boot factory. The Buse School, named after a long-time principal, welcomed children and teachers for many years across the street from the theatre until its closure and recent demolition. The historic Sugar Hill Cemetery and many other properties and assets have contributed to a history that can still be felt in downtown Sugar Hill. The Eagle Theatre itself is built on the location of what used to be the Sugar Hill Shoe Shop and later a private residence. It is the history of these properties and the people that roamed life's corridors of the past that are perhaps contributing to some strange ghostly phenomenon at the Eagle Theatre. Since its opening, many individuals have experienced unusual activity in the Eagle Theatre. Players, guild staff and actors have witnessed sound and lighting issues which have been noticed by various patrons of plays and movies at the theatre. Computer programming has been scrambled and microphone channels mysteriously switched inside the control room computer closet. Tools and props have disappeared and then reappeared days later. Items have been found and moved around inside the prop room that is locked when not in use by the Players Guild. City staff members have even reported breezes and the sound of wind inside the theatre when the general public is not present in the venue. Ghost stories in downtown Sugar Hill are not unique to the Eagle Theatre. Tales have long been told about the Buse School. It was one of the oldest buildings on West Broad Street and private charter schools that utilised the property in recent years often talked about strange experiences. Both private schools coincidentally were focused on visual and performing arts. There are even stories of unusual activity at the newly opened City Hall. Even though the current City Hall was opened in 2013, the history of its property is linked to a former leather and boot factory. The Sugar Hill Distillery, with its trademark Apparition Brewing, is a location in Sugar Hill that has a long history in the local community. It is a place that might also be haunted by its past and a young girl by the name of Alice. Prior to becoming the Sugar Hill Distillery, the building served as a community centre for the city of Sugar Hill. 
the city acquired the property from Sugar Hill Baptist Church, which is now Sugar Hill Church. The church used the location as a fellowship hall prior to moving from its West Broad Street location to its current location on Cumming Highway. The building has hosted thousands of weddings, receptions, birthday parties, anniversary celebrations and other activities over many decades. The property is also located next to Sugar Hill Historic Cemetery, the final resting place of many of Sugar Hill's past families and community members. Several years ago, Kerry and J.D. Lybrook opened the Sugar Hill Distillery. They, within the past year, bought the building from the city. In addition to purchasing the building, they also acquired its history and a ghost tale or two. Of all of the ghost tales, the stories of the haunting of Alice are the most common and intriguing. Even before the Lybrooks opened the Sugar Hill Distillery, there are reports of city staff items being moved around and other strange activities. While doing construction of the distillery, contractors would ask about a young girl named Alice who would carry on entire conversations with visitors. Professional ghost hunters and others have since visited the distillery with the hope of experiencing Alice. Some have been successful and some have not. Amateur ghost hunters have also visited and experienced slamming doors, mysterious lights and moving objects. So if you find yourself in the area, make sure to check out the various ghostly offerings that Lake Lanier has. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you like your books with a hint of the paranormal, please feel free to check out our website at www.roswellpublishing.co.uk. And until next time, stay spooky. 